Hi everyone, Aces up here for Pokenerv. I haven't uploaded any content for a while, so I just wanted to bring you guys some, and I was just looking at a few hands. I'm taking a bit of a break from WCoop just for a couple of days to refresh. It's hard being on the night shift. I was getting a little bit of burnt out. It gives me a chance to do a little bit of study, and I thought, why not? Let's do it together. So here's the first of three hands that I'll be looking at that I've uh, kept aside in my journal that I intended to review when I got a chance, that being now. So let's get into it. Jack Queen suited on the button. It's a good one. Open in the big blind defense, and I go ahead and see that about 30% pot. Uh, opponent calls, and then the ace comes on the turn. So my thinking in this hand was that uh, I was just a little bit curious. We've got a fairly wide range, but our opponent has an even wider range. Normally when wide ranges clash, you bet a little bit on the bigger side, but in this instance, between our range advantage uh, as well as... Uh, just the dryness, the texture of the board, it's going to make it very hard for our opponent to continue on. I think betting a smaller size is probably best. Um, so my guess is a bet size around a quarter pot. I've gone a little bit bigger than that 30% um, for exploitative reasons, just because players generally, I think that 5% makes a big difference with their continuing range. Uh, and then aside from the C bet, I'm just curious on the turn if I should barrel. Uh, I would have barreled a while ago, but now I don't in this situation on an ace, I did check it. And the reason why I don't barrel is because I think our opponent's calling range on the flop is quite ace heavy. Uh, and I don't think they're folding a pair. They can also have three, four. They can still be trapping with some fives. They have a little bit more five X than us. So they do have a bit of a nut advantage. Um, but I do think they're very X heavy and king heavy on the flop. Some players might even continue on the turn with king high, not impossible. Um, he, I, I don't know if he would have or not, but he did have king high. So kind of an interesting hand. Um, not too complicated, just an easy one to look at, but just some interesting stuff to consider. So uh, getting into Pio here, and I haven't even looked at it yet. I just loaded it up and uh, it went a bit strange. My Pio has been a little bit weird recently. Um, so I had to uh, run it a second time. Um, it looks like it's worked okay. So now we finally get to see these results. So after uh, our opponent checks... The options that I had were 22, 44, and 66. And you can see that it's mixing between a 22 and 44% bet. So it does like to bet on this board, as I suspected, quite small, just under quarter pot. Uh, and you can see with the specific combo that we have, uh, it's actually doing a lot of checking, which is interesting, um, regardless of whether it's got the back door flush or not. Uh, you can see it's actually interestingly betting a little bit of a bigger size with the queen jack of hearts some of the time. Not too surprising that it's checking back um, a lot of the time. It's betting around 30% and I did bet it, but, uh, and it's going for that small size that I used, but doing a, a little bit of that, of checking with that hand. Um, it's interesting to me that it checks that hand, but bets say king jack more. It's doing a little bit more checking with the queen. So it is checking some kings. Betting, I, I think it's more just of a protection slash value bet with the king highs, I guess. I guess if we just have a little bit of a look at our equity in position, we've got around 50% with the uh, jack queen. And the, the equity with these king jacks is actually fairly high with king jack because we're beating all the king x, um, weaker king x that he can have. So I, I guess just the, the difference in equity here is making a difference and it's just going ahead and betting with that, uh, pushing more equity with those stronger king highs and um, it's betting uh, with a lot of ace highs too just for protection slash value. Uh, so I think that's pretty interesting. It's betting around 70% of the time. So you know as we thought, it's going to be betting a lot on this dry board where it's difficult for our opponent to, to defend with. And uh, if we do go for that small size... King eight's what our opponent had, and he should be calling every time. So he did call, and that seems fine. He's only really folding a lot of these like middling junky hands. Um, it's interesting that because he's got the nut advantage with a lot of um, 5x, he is check raising a lot of 5x, and therefore check raising a lot of other combos. Uh, all these like four sevens where he's got backdoor straights, backdoor flushes, and stuff like that. Fairly high check raise frequency. He's actually check raising us 34% when we bet small. So you can imagine that if we node lock here and have him check raising at a more 
realistic, let's say, a more uh, population tendency type of check raise on this board, which would probably be downward of 10%. You can imagine that the betting frequency for us is going to go right up because we're going to get to realize our equity more and get blown off our hand far less. And I would imagine that probably makes betting 100% on this board quite reasonable for a small size. And that's why I did bet it. I think exploitably it works quite well. But you can see that if our opponent is using a correct GTO strategy and check raising a lot with the nut advantage they have on this board, um, I might just open the range explorer and just have a quick look here. Okay, so uh, in the range explorer, we can see that uh, for the big blinds range, well, let's look at our range first. So this is what our range looks like. And trips plus is 5%, 37 combos. So around 5% of our range. Uh, and if I switch that over to the big blind, it's 8%. So it's not a huge difference, but it's significant. Around 8% of their range as opposed to about five of ours. Um, it's enough for them to, to try and leverage that nut advantage and put pressure on us, especially since we're c-betting, you know, supposed to be c-betting at such a high frequency. So that's interesting. Um, but of course, realistically, in the games we play, that's not going to be the case unless you're against a, a top opponent or, or someone a bit aggro. So the next question I have is uh, after we bet and, uh, sorry, check, if we do opt to check, ah, uh, sorry, bet, small, and we do get called and we get the aces spades on the turn, what we should be doing. So we can see we're actually betting a lot more than I thought here. Um, but you've also got to keep in mind that this is presuming that opponent's range now doesn't contain a lot of fives. And this is a little bit tricky. And one of the you know problems with using Pyo is without node locking is that you're always sort of guessing in the real world what's happening as opposed to what Pio, PO is showing you. Uh, and the problem here is, is that I don't think opponents actually check raise for fives that often on the flop. I think most opponents will just call. So after we bet flop, our opponent's actually also raising some ace -X, but I don't think he's going to raise it. I think he's normally just going to call with it. So the problem that we have here is that after opponent calls our bet on the and the ace comes, they still have a fair bit of ace -X and a fair bit of uh, 5x as opposed to what PO shows, which is very little of that. And that's why it's actually got us continuing at a high range, uh, at a high percentage. 70% of the time we should be barreling. Specific combo that I have checks. Uh, the queen jack does check, but I'm just surprised that it's it's barreling at that frequency. Um, because I probably wouldn't have barreled. You know, if I had like jack nine, uh, I probably wouldn't have barreled, I must admit. Like this jack x's and nine x's and stuff, I'd probably give up with that stuff most of the time. I'd probably be more inclined to barrel something with a three or four in it. Like I'd probably do barrel these ones with the gut shots. Probably be more inclined to barrel them. Maybe not the king highs so much since we have showdown unless we got the spades, which is, you know, a flush draw and the gut shot. Um, but I probably, yeah, like I said, you know, I wouldn't barrel like seven, ten, whereas Pio actually does barrel it a lot. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but I do think if we put in more fives, if we put in more ace highs and five x's in his range, the result will be that we should be c betting more because he's check raising less. We get to realize our equity more, but then we should be checking more on the turn. So I'd imagine some of these hands would be checked more frequently uh, if we actually node locked, which I'm not going to do. But you know, you can kind of get the idea of how it's going to affect the strategy. So I just want to look at the uh, just go ahead and look at the hotness here. Uh, Select player uh, in position. And I guess I want to look at um, equity. Uh, this is an old version. Sorry, guys. It normally shows. You can normally click between. Is it going to do that again if I do Control H? Yeah, it's going to ask every time. Okay. Yeah, I'm using an old version. I, I did tell um, Piotr, or however you say his name, Piotr, Piotr, I don't even know, uh, the creator. He's a friend of mine on Skype, so I did tell him that my PO's have been a bit buggy, and he said I'm using an old version. He'll set, get me. To, he'll help me update it later, uh, or he'll update it later, but uh, hasn't done it yet. So uh, anyway, I was just curious to see here the best cards for us, and 
Um, not surprisingly, you know, it's going to be these middling cards. Um, and then the aces and kings highs that our opponent's going to be floating on are going to be the worst cards, as well as some of those gut shot completing gut cards that could hit our opponent's range. Um, yeah, so that that's not surprising. I think we expect that because when our opponent continues on the flop, he's got a lot of king high, he's got a lot of ace high, and he's got some, you know, like four six where he's got like a straight draw and stuff. So you can imagine that threes, fours, and sixes are pretty bad. Um, deuce is repeating. I mean, occasionally he's got deuce X, so not the best. Uh, and then those sort of jack through sevens that don't hit him, his continuing range at all. Because, I mean, he's not continuing with 8-10 on that board, right? But we might have 8-10 and C-bet. So these are all the cards that I'd be more inclined to barrel on. So just keep that in mind, those low boards, is that, you know, your opponents, if it's a connecting, those sort of low boards which come up a fair bit, um, where you see betting, uh, just remember that, you know, if you get a middling card on the turn, it's you normally it's a good card to barrel on, whereas if you get an ace or a king or a straight completing card, normally there are cards that you should slow down on. Um, so I think that's interesting. But um, do, do do keep in mind that this also has him check raising like we saw, you know, with some, you know, some straight draws, some 5x and some ace highs and stuff. And he's probably not doing that. So the ace high is actually even worse, I think, than it looks here. Like here it's got the king high is the worst, but I actually think the ace high is the worst. Um, because he's probably not check raising his ace highs like PO is. You know, we just remember that after we bet, you know, he's check raising a fair bit with his ace x's. I think you could actually take virtually all of them out. I think most players are just going to check call with ace high here. So that makes the ace really bad. Um, same with the king high. I mean, I guess they're both the same. Well, not really, because I think some opponents actually fold king high. Like some opponents probably just fold king seven off on this board. You know, they, some opponents probably do. Maybe not many to the small bet, but some might. Some might just say, look, I don't want to get barreled. You know, I'm just I'm, you know, going to make a pair so often. I'm not going to try and hold on. And they might just keep it simple. They might be multi-tabling um, and just go for the fold. But the, I don't think any opponents fold ace high on that board. But king high might start to fold. And I think queen high does actually sometimes fold. So a hand like, you know, queen eight, I don't think continues, whereas Pio has it continuing. Um so that being the case, it's not popping up now. Control H. That's what I was doing. Where's it gone? <laughs> it's disappeared. <laughs> Control H. My bio is doing some weird things. Help me, people. What happened to the uh, compare hotness? I can't get it to pop up at all now. Just make sure it's not hiding on one of my other screens, but it's not. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to see the queen, how bad the queen was, and then consider that it might not be as bad as it looks in, in PO, in the hotness. It's actually probably not a bad card to barrel on the queen, because I don't think many opponents are going to continue with queen high. Maybe a hand like queen four suited, where they've got a backdoor straight and flush, they might, but that's about it. So it's probably a good, decent one to barrel on as well. Okay, so uh, just thinking about the hand again. Um... Seed betting on this board texture, high frequency around 70%, small size is good. On the turn when we get called, best cards for us are sevens through queens, I would say. Aces and kings, not so good. Two threes, four sixes, not so good. Um, but overall, opponents are probably overfolding on this board, so we want to be seed betting close to 100%. Um, they're not check raising much, they're overfolding, and they're not check raising much. So we get to realize more equity. So, um, yeah, I think I feel pretty comfortable about this spot now in this hand. And uh, as played, I think it was okay. I think just showing down once the opponent calls flop is probably the play, especially on the six of diamonds, which, you know, we said was pretty good for their range. Uh, check, check, six of diamonds. Our opponent uh, should actually be leading around 45%. Um, but if they do check, we should just check down with the Jack Queen. Okay, so next hand, kind of an interesting one. Um, I felt like I should have won this hand. So I've got 7-8 suited and I get 3-bet by an aggressive player. Um, this is in a W coupe. 500 buy-in, I think. It was. It's 1,000 buy-in, $500 for the KOs. It's a progressive knockout. 
pretty deep, so pretty easy call after opening with 7-8 suited. Now, I felt like I should win this hand. I felt like uh, we can have all sets. Um, we can even have some maybe 5-7 suited. We can have hands like 5-6, 4-5, maybe even 4-6 suited. So I felt like we had a little bit of a nut advantage here. And uh, especially after our opponent checked, I felt kind of weak, not stabbing at any point. So I just wanted to have a look at this. He gets the showdown with Ace Jack here, which is a little bit annoying. So um, I think four betting is not terrible at some frequency, um, but generally just calling with these pseudo connectors. So I'm going to just load up the tree. Um, so I put the board in as I made a slight mistake here, guys. I put the board in as three five six. I'm not going to rerun it, but uh, I did put the board in as three five six. Uh, I guess it's not a huge difference. I guess it's not a huge difference. Yeah, but uh, let's just see the strategy in this type of situation. So I've put in the stacks and everything again, some different bet sizes, and uh, I've included some donking options for us. So after we, well, this is where it gets interesting is that we should actually donk a few percentage of the time. And this sp specific combo that I have, seven, eight, well, uh, seven, six, seven, eight, it's a gut shot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this specific combo. Sorry, lost the camera, guys. That's okay. I keep going. Um, this specific combo should be betting um, around five, six percent of the time. I actually think that's interesting because I mean I want to do a little, I could incorporate a little bit more donk betting into my game, and it's just interesting that this is one combo that donk actually, you know, a GTO solution does donk a small percentage of the time. I don't think this is a, you know. I've run this fairly accurately. Oh, actually, I actually haven't gone. I've only gone down to 0.7% of the pot, but uh, it's pretty accurate. I just wonder if that's not... Sometimes, you know, it, it culls down a little bit more if you keep running it, but I don't think it will with this combo because it's a pretty good donking combo. The interesting thing is, is that if it goes check, check, and we get that queen of clubs on the turn, we should actually be leading now around 60% of the time. And the hand that I had is actually a good one to lead. And I think this is interesting. And it leads for the smallest size. Half I've got half pot and 88% pot. So it leans towards betting 7-8 uh, suited most of the time that uh, half pot size. But it does mix with some bigger sizes, 88%. Still sometimes go big. So I think that's interesting. And the reason why is because, you know, we can still have all those sets. Uh, we can also have 5-6, uh, which is the up and down pair. Um, for five, it's betting less though, but that's up and down with a pair. Pocket four, uh, two, four, fives. In this situation, yeah, pocket fives would be the up and down with a pair, so it's betting those hands. Um, it can still have a, we can still have a few over pairs. They're not always betting, but hands like sevens that need protection on a six high board are betting more than say tens, which need less protection. Uh, three jacks I can have. I would, I don't have that in at a hundred percent because sometimes I would four bet at pre. Uh, but I do have it in, the, you know, around three quarters of the time. I would just flat a three bet with it when it's low jack versus high jack. I don't really want to play for stacks with jacks when we're that deep. Um, although I actually did not long after that play for stacks with jacks <laughs> because he'd been three betting me so much. But um, I was a little bit shorter and the blinds went up. So I wasn't as deep as this. But I did get M17 in with jacks against that same opponent that busted me not long after. So that was pretty annoying. Um, but anyway... So yeah, uh, we can actually donk lead this combo where we have a gut shot just about all the time. We just want to be leading this hand. And and that's what I thought. I thought it was a little bit soft by me not donking. Um, the queen wasn't the best card because he, I think you can have king, queen, nice queen, stuff like that. But um, maybe even a jack queen occasionally. But that probably bets the flop. So I feel like he might be more inclined to check ace queen and maybe king queen. Those hands are a little bit more showdown. Even king queen might bet though. So I think I should have just gone ahead and fired hard here. And um, Pio is uh, just just clarifying that that's actually a decent strategy. Um, some of these like king seven where we got a gut shot as well. Would makes it is a good one. It's even firing sometimes with just like high cards king queen and stuff like that. Well, that's a that's a pair with the queen, but the king jack. So it is firing if it hits the queen with king, queen, ace, queen. Um, some gut shots, some of those middling pairs and some like combo draws. So I think that's interesting. Ace five as well firing, biggish size. Um, and we're going to have some club draws in there too, I'd imagine. So what about a hand like 
well, it can't be a queen, but I, I guess jack nine on the turn and jack eight is firing with the club. So we can have some flush draws as well. Seven, nine of clubs, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, seven, nine would be uh, the gut shot as well. So I think that's interesting that it's mixing between combo and just like equity driven hands that have some, you know, pairs and some strength. And then obviously throwing in some of those flush draws and, and gut shots like we have for some balance and to get some folds from the types of hands that he's going to check flop with. So uh, I did sort of misplay this one. Um, I did just, uh, you know, check turn when I should have fired. Uh, and if I do check on the turn and he checks and then we get the nine of clubs on the river, uh, we can actually still bet. We can actually still uh, lead bet the river around 35% of the time. And uh, it doesn't have that combo in here. You can see it's just a thin line because it donks it. Uh, lead bets it on the, not donk bets it actually because there was no bet on the flop, but lead bets it on the turn. So it's actually not in here. Uh, it's it's not in here, but um, you can imagine that if you, the small percentage of the time that it does check it, it now bets it on the river. So yeah, um, with some other bluffs like 8, 10 and jack 8. Um betting all the queens that it checked on the turn. It probably had the odd flush draw that it checked that it now bets. Um, any like hands like tens that checked, went check, check turn, now it fires with those and the jacks and that. So it still has some decent hands that it can, you know, strength, strong hands that it can bet. And so it throws in some bluffs like, you know, see these weaker nothing hands um, just to balance out. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, so I, I was too passive there and I should have led turn. And then uh, if I did lead turn, uh, with that and bet uh, the size it recommends the half inch pot size and we got called and then we got the nine of clubs on the turn uh, sorry the river in that instance um, we uh, just want to empty the clip just empty the clip with that hand the seven eight um, not too surprising it's interesting that it actually checks when we hit the flush so it's uh, throwing a little bit of balance in there with some strong hands like flushes um, because, you know, we could have bet checked with a hand like tens. So it's going to check some stronger hands as well. Um, it's also probably just protecting itself a little bit there with the small flush because our opponent, when he calls turn, can be a little bit flush heavy because um, it is betting some of those bigger flushes like the ace of clubs half the time. So it is checking some nut flushes, but also checking some smaller flushes. It's checking the smaller flushes a little bit more. Okay, so I think that's enough about that hand, so it's interesting. So, uh, yeah, misplay, uh, should have bet turn. Pre-flop call, I think the three-bet calling is uh, pretty fine. Uh, sometimes four-bet, but I, I generally like to just flat call this deep stacks with this type of hand. Uh, should have led the turn. Could have led the flop. Not insane to just donk bet the flop. I mean, I would sometimes do that with a set. Sometimes if I had a set of fours here, I would just donk bet. Um so I, I might even sometimes donk bet with fives at a small percentage as well. Just because if our opponent has a hand like jacks or tens and we bet flop, bet, turn, shove, river, I mean, it's just hard for him to call down. I mean, it's just so hard to call down here with an overpair, this stack depth, bet, bet, bet. I mean, we can just so easily have a set um, or flop like four, six suited and just lead it. So I do like to donk bet sometimes like, you know, PO does, but yeah. I probably do, I should probably do it around five uh, percent of the time, like Po does as well. So it's I think it's balanced. It's okay, um, but anyway, um, sometimes don't bet it, but definitely bet turn. And then if he does call, just empty the clip. So that's that hand. Uh, we're going into a lot of depth here. Um, so uh, you know I think it's good though. It's good to do some depth, like go into some depth with these types of situations. They are pretty interesting ones. So we're just going to finish off now with uh, one more. And it's going to be, um, this time I've got a picture for you guys, a screenshot. Where did I put it? Uh, where did I put that screenshot? Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Okay, so <laughs> not the best image. I was doing it in a hurry because I was multi-tabling and it's on AAA poker. So I just thought screenshotting it was the easiest. But basically, you can get the gist of what's happening here. I've opened from cutoff. The big blind's called. The uh, sorry, the big blind has three bet. So it's it's cut off open. 
Big blind three bet. Quite deep, easy call with ace queen suited. Don't really want to four bet it, because then if they five bet, you know we're we're not really getting it in against many worse hands unless our opponent's a maniac. So pretty easy just call in position against the three bet. Opponent bets c bets on queen jack six to two tone. Easy call for us. Top pair, top kicker with a backdoor uh, straight backdoor nut flush. Opponent checks on the four of spades, so the flush gets there on the turn. Opponent checks. I feel in this situation we want to bet and we're fairly polarized now. We're probably not betting many jacks or worse hands. So we generally have ace queen plus. So we're pretty much saying we have jack queen trap. Uh, maybe jacks, sometimes queens or sixes. Um, queens might four bet pre, but sometimes I flat them and same with jacks. So we're pretty much saying we have sets or flushes or maybe ace queen. Um, so it's getting on the thin side because we can have some strong hands here. And king queen, I don't even know if I'd bet that. Uh, because our opponent might sometimes check with a hand like ace queen or aces or kings because they don't want to pot control at this depth when there's a flush hit, hit hits the turn. So I don't even know if I bet king queen. So let's just take a look at this hand. Um, so here we are. Put the ranges in. So we are opening and then calling with this range. So calling with like most suited connectors and gappers at this depth. Um, queens half the time. Jacks, I put in his calling all the time. I don't really fall bet in this spot. He is big blind though, so it wouldn't be crazy. But we were pretty deep to be getting it in. Um, you could argue that maybe it can play well as a four bet, and then our opponent will just call, and then we play in position with a strong hand. If like you know the three bet call a four bet, um, if small a small four bet. Um, but uh, yeah, I generally just like to see flops and let my opponents. You know, they generally make mistakes, so I think calling works out well. Um, I, it's very tricky with an opponent's uh, big blind uh, three betting range. So I've got all the standard stuff, which is, you know, sevens half the time, eights three quarters, nines plus, I think they're always going to three bet. Uh, ace 10 suited plus, ace jack off plus. Um, occasionally I've got some like suited aces and off suit aces and connectors and stuff just to give them a bit of a mix because, you know, some players might just three bet in this spot with like four six suited or, you know, six seven suited and stuff like that. So. And, you know, ace-5 suited. I feel like ace-5 off might... I've got that in as 3-betting 5%. That actually might 3-bet a little bit more. I, it's really hard, though, to, to guess what... I'm just guessing what the general population is doing here. But the population tendency, I mean, when it comes to 3-betting from the big blind, it's it's kind of fairly... Uh, you know, different strategies are, are fairly uh, commonly used. Like some players will 3-bet 6-7 suited all the time. Some players will never 3-bet it. So I've tried to just give them a bit of a mix, but you know, clearly they've got those strong value hands, which is the focus of their three betting range from the big blind. And then just a few bluffs sprinkled in. So uh, let's go ahead now and have a look here, guys. We see that they should be C betting around 60% of the time. Not too surprising. Um, with Ace Queen Plus and uh, some flush draws. Really... Uh, Really betting the flush draws very heavily. And of course, um, yeah, those strong hands. And, you know, some bluffs like ace 10, uh, 9, 10 is the up and down. I've given them, them that hand at a small frequency. Some players would have that more. So betting a few hands like that. Um, mixing in a few bluffs like back doors when they have black door flush, like 7, 10 clubs, back door straight, back door flush. Good one to add in as a bluff. Um, hands like pocket fives at a very small frequency I put that in I think some players occasionally three bet that deep mostly just call with it though so I've got it in a very small frequency but it's just interesting to see that you know that part of their range is uh, is betting just for protection because it's such a good result when they get to take down the flop uh, that you know win the hand on the flop with a small pair uh, and the range is you know as obviously we can still see their range is very strong and um, they do have 58% equity so not too surprising on this board after three betting with their strong range and getting two high cards. They did bet, and I sizes I've got here are 3366, 111. I was curious to see if they should bet small or medium or just go huge. Um, they do actually sometimes use that huge bet. Like Kings will actually bet that size sometimes. Um, but I'm pretty sure they went with a smaller size. Maybe actually they went 66, I think. I can't remember exactly. Technically, I think they went just over half pot. So we should choose 66. Um, 
I, I've put in, you know, proportional effective stacks and stack pot, not the actual, you know, size in the actual hand, but yeah, it's all relative. So uh, after they bet that size, obviously ace queen is uh, just going to be calling, which is what I did. And then we got the four of spades on the turn. Now here's where it gets interesting after they check. We actually want to be betting now. Oh, now no, that's right. Now this hand I actually did look at previously, um, and uh, you know obviously because I had it saved, and I actually saved the node locked version. So I probably should have saved both, but this one's actually been node locked. So I'll explain what I've done to try and make it more accurate for the situation. On the four of spades. Uh, I've given, I've got bet sizes here for our opponent. Um, sorry, out of position, right? So yeah, 33, 66 and 99. We gave them 66% C bet and then they can bet 50, 50 or 88% on the turn. Uh, I've given them, uh, I've just decided to keep it simple. So I've said they're either going to bet 50%, so half pot or check just for node locking simplicity. And rather than splitting the ranges in node locking, it gets a bit messy. So I've just put all the stuff I think they would bet normally, like you know, realistically in the games we play. I've just got that a half pot bet. Now the stuff that I put in there is, uh, was the uh, set strategy node lock? This is how I did it. So I took out uh, I had them betting, this is what they're betting on the turn for 50%. I've got them betting aces and kings uh, and all of their flushes. Well, nearly all. They've got a few flushes you can see here that aren't always betting. And so that means that they're checking. Um, it becomes a lot weaker. Now, the difference this made with Pio... Um, is that PO had them checking. I know I keep using PIO and PO interchangeably. It's, I can't stop doing it, but it's actually PO. But <laughs> PO actually um, checks a lot in this situation on the turn. Now, I've got them betting, you know, like I said, with strong hands, the flushes and the sets and overpairs. I think that's more common of the games we play. What do you think? So queen jack six two tone board and the turn is a small spade. I just don't really see opponents after three betting p and three betting pre, and and then c betting. I just don't see many players now hitting a flush and checking or having a set and just checking to strengthen their turn check range, as well as I guess a little bit pop controlling as flushes. But I just don't see it. And I think the only strong hands they might check is overpairs. I think I probably could have taken the overpairs out. But I have left some small flushes in. So what I've done, what it's interesting because what it really means is that in this situation, if what I'm assuming is true, that a turn check is actually really weak. And we might actually be able to apply a lot of pressure in that spot where our opponent may be C-bet with middle pair like Ace-Jack or King-Jack has a lot of like ace 10 ace king probably give ups maybe has tens and decided just to bet because they didn't want to check um i don't think they have that many sets or flushes in the in the lower stakes games especially where players just bet the strength of the hand more often and don't get that tricky but in a higher buy-in game opponents are probably going to be savvy enough to say okay i want to uh keep my checking range on the turn a little bit you know keep some strength in there what are good candidates to check uh, and then start putting in a few flushes and a few, you know, some combos of sets and overpairs. I think overpairs are more likely to definitely check the turn because they do want to pop control. You know, you don't want to stack off with an overpair on that board. That would be a bit of a disaster. So I, I could see aces and kings checking turn and then firing a value on the river. But I still think a lot of players will just go gun ho and just bet aces and kings on the turn on that board as well. Especially, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, especially in the games we play, I just see it all the time. Um, other hands I think they might bet is, uh, I guess they would barrel. I've got them barreling ace-king here with a spade blocker nearly always. Um, well, with a spade, uh, you know, draw. I don't I don't know if I did that or I think Pio might have actually had that as part of the strategy anyway. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty big 
leak, I think, is players don't keep that turn checking range any strength in it. But at the same time, you know, they can still have the overpairs, but you might even be able to blow them off overpairs. So that's something I think we can exploit um, that's been illustrated here. But the other thing it does point out too is that if our opponent actually is checking these strong hands, uh, betting these strong hands, therefore their checking range on the turn becomes weaker. Ace Queen becomes just a slam dunk bet for us. You know, 95, uh, basically 100% of the time, sorry. We want to be betting, even King Queen becomes a slam dunk. And you can even start betting hands like Ace Jack and King Jack for value, as well as then mixing in your bluffs like King 10, 9, 10, and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and some of you are uh, obviously got your flushes as well. Um, but it's actually even betting some 6x now um, to take advantage of our opponent's weak checking range on the turn. Now, I've probably gone to the extreme here. I mean, to be fair, I think opponents actually would check a little bit more um, of these strong hands. I mean, basically, I've got them like betting half the time and checking half the time, and that half the time they're betting is like strength very not that many bluffs so just keep that in mind that this is probably a little bit drastically altered they probably do occasionally check top set or aces of kings or a flush nut flush to be like ace ten of spades to be tricky rather than just bet at 100 percent. so that's just going to have that effect of just reducing the times that these hands can bet now when i had it as a gto solution the interesting thing is is that we are still pretty polarized on the turn when we bet um and so we do generally want to go and bet a decent size. So the bets that I had were 33.66 and overpot for turn betting in position. Um, and so Ace Queen actually is using it. Actually, is using the big bet a fair bit. It's actually overpotting occasionally. I, I guess the function is that it protects. You know, it protects from hands with a spade um, that still have some equity, significant equity. Um, so I guess it gets a little bit of protection and value from some of those types of hands um, if they do want to continue. But it actually does use the small bet. It actually pretty mixes pretty evenly here. But it actually does use that smaller bet a little bit more than I realized here. It actually uses that small bet around 33% of the time. I find that interesting. I thought it was... Uh, it was a lot more than that with the GTO solution. Um, but it's actually using it a lot more when I node lock and their checking range becomes weaker. It can value bet a little bit more confidently and go with a smaller size with top pair. Um, yeah, that is interesting. I guess it makes sense though, because if opponent's checking range on the turn is really that weak, then, um, they can pretty confidently bet small and try and get some of those, uh, hands that are drawing pretty thin to continue and fold out a lot of those junky hands anyway, um, since they have less traps and just more, more sort of weak stuff. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, and, uh, I'll leave it on that note because I've been going for over 40 minutes now around 40 minutes has been pretty intense so yeah i mean again i think sort of some interesting hands um some good takeaways so we looked at uh this hand here with the seven eight um played it a little bit passively should have could have donked better small percentage don't mind it uh gut shot back to uh flush definitely a good candidate to donk bet um but if it does go check, check, flop, uh, definitely, uh, I think check raising too actually at a percentage on this board would be good as well. I think check raising actually would be nice here. Um, I, might, I might just have actually have a really quick look at that. I might just actually, uh, it's not eight, nine, it's actually seven, eight I had, but I put it, wrote it as eight, nine, but. So we check opponent um, check. I don't know. I just want to see if they bet the smaller size. They should generally be betting the smaller size, which for in position here, I've got them. See betting. I've got 40 and 88 because it's a three bet pot. I've scaled it up a little bit. 40, 44, did I say? 44, yeah. So they want to use that size a fair bit more than the big size. Um, and the ace jack is actually mostly a check for opponents, so they did play the hand nicely. But uh, if they do bet, uh, our hand is a pretty good check raising hand, seven eight suited. It check raises it about a third of the time, so I, I just thought it would do that. I just wanted to quickly check that. So yeah, I played this too passively. Um, I should have led hard turn. Uh, well, not even that hard, but just you know, we could just bet around forty uh, percent or half pot on the turn. 
Um, we still have a lot of pairs in our range that want to get some protection, uh, as well as some strong hands like sets and the odd straight. So we can fire around half pot turn um, and then uh, empty the clip on the river. So that would have been a better line when it goes check, check, queen clubs is the lead bet on the turn with the 7-8 uh, for the sizing of half pot. Uh, so that was interesting. Played that one too passively. Um, so I know I'm sort of rehashing, over rehashing here, guys. <laughs> Starting to say the same thing over and over. Uh, I am getting a little bit tired because I'm on night shift and it's actually almost midday now, which is around when I start getting tired. Um, so we looked at that handle, thought it was interesting. We just looked at the situation uh, with the ace-queen suited, um, really analyzed that. I think players checking ranges are weaker than they should be in this situation when they check the turn. And that allows us to bet ace-queen very confidently for a small size. Um, sometimes the larger size is fine. Uh, but if you're against a savvy opponent who's playing a closer to GTO solution, this hand actually checks back around two thirds of the time. It only bets around a third of the time and it does scale up since it's gonna be betting a little bit more polarized against a strong, a turn range that, a turn checking range that has a lot more traps and strong stuff in it. Unlike the situation where we make the turn checking range weak and now we can bet a little bit more linear with a lot more hands for value and protection. And the other situation, uh, the final one, uh, the other one that we looked at was um, the Jack Queen, a little bit more straightforward. The uh, Jack Queen on a 255 board, uh, because on this dry board, it's very hard for our opponent to defend and we have a range advantage. We want to be C betting a lot. I think it was around 70% in, in PO, but I'd go ahead and say you could probably bet around 100% profitably on this type of board because players aren't going to hit us with many check raises, probably overfolding. Uh, you know, they're probably folding hands like queen high when they should be continuing. We saw in PO those types of hands should be continuing. Um, but uh, definitely ace high and king high and some, you know, gut shotty straight draws type hands should continue. And therefore the ace and the king uh, to a lesser extent in reality, the queen, but definitely the ace and the king and those straight completing cards on the turn are cards that we generally want to be checking more on, um, especially given our opponent's strategy is going to alter from the GTO solution where they're going to be a lot more passive on the flop and have more of those types of hands. So I think the way this hand was played by betting flop and then checking turn and checking river was fine. Um, good hands to barrel on on the turn is if we get those midland cards that our opponent's less likely to have, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, and queens for the most uh, part, because I, I don't think most opponents that we play against are continuing with the queens, but GTO solution, they do. So that's it, guys. Uh, lots of uh, in-depth analysis, uh, pretty hardcore, but I think some good takeaways, uh, and I'm feeling good about spending uh, the better part of an hour reviewing these hands with you and uh, going into battle. My next session will probably be not tonight, but the next night. Um, and uh, always sessions like this are, are, are good to... Uh, just sort of take a step back and doing some analysis like this, I think really helps with the focus level the next session that you do and hopefully it helps you too. This has been Aces Up for Poker Nerve. Until next time, keep it real. Good luck on the felt.